Hello everybody, welcome to this game that I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to explain more when the cutscene ends, but uh, since it was a uh, calm moment here, I just wanted to uh, say welcome. Okay, uh, welcome to uh, Final Fantasy XIV. Um, so, funny story. Uh, I've had to do this intro like three times and record the first like ten levels uh, four, five times. Uh, one time I recorded everything up to about level 50 with everything I wanted to do. And then it all fell apart. Okay, so I'm gonna try to maintain that level of, uh, of, uh, audio when it comes to, uh, cutscenes. Hopefully, uh, it doesn't go like, nah, I'm just not gonna record desktop audio this time. I was like, dang it. Okay, so I'm gonna make a character, and then I'm gonna explain a few things while we do that. Okay, so to kind of explain, uh, we are going to be... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's just go with uh, my actual birthday, so it's the... Oh, I forgot, it's like always like one or two days a little bit different. It's, it's a little weird. So, okay. So, I already picked a character, and we're going to go over a few things later, but a lot of this stuff at the beginning is not really... is very inconsequential. Uh, for purposes of lore, uh, you have uh, patron deities that you can pick. Um, After thinking about it for a bit, I'll just go with this one. It doesn't actually give any sort of, you know, like, benefits to anything. Like, it doesn't give you a plus three stat when countering this type of enemy, you know. Uh, 
It used to, but not anymore. Mm -mm. But now we actually get to the hardest choice that I have to pick for this entire game. And you may think that's a joke, but it's not. Uh, because one of the things that this does is it changes your starting city. You, In the original design of the original game, so 1.0, you were originally going to have six different cities that you could start at, and each starting city had two classes. And they eventually started pairing that back to just the three main cities that were right next to each other. So uh, you have Gridania, which is uh, that sort of like elven forest type of environment. You have Ulda, which is the uh, desert city uh, with the with sort of like the uh, uh, what's the uh, correct term? Uh, where you could definitely tell that a lot of aspects of the city are out to get you. And then you have Limsa Lamensa, which is this very uh, city on the sea, not just by the sea, sort of vibe to it. Uh, and then we have um, our classes. Uh, They're separated between uh, physical and magical. Uh, there's subsects to that, but we will get to all of that eventually. So first off, let's talk about our jobs. Um, I'm gonna just say classes because it's so much easier to just refer to that since I'm an old RPG player and so referring to it as a the classes that are in the job system. Let's just explain it like that. Okay, so you have Gladiator. Um, they evolve into a paladin. It's uh, sword and board type gameplay where you're defending people, hitting them back. Um, you even have like minor like healing stuff to it as well. Uh, they are your main tank. The other main tank is Marauder, which is the warrior type character. Um, and their big thing is about basically just taking a ton of damage and not caring. Um, both of which are, are pretty essential for you if you are wanting to go ahead and do most content solo. Uh, tanking content is some of the easiest stuff you could do in an MMO like this is. But uh, it, it's actually a lot harder than that because Archer, this one right here... Uh, which evolves into Bard, as you can tell that's actually a harp on their back um, that actually unfolds into a bow. Um, it's really interesting uh, because Archer is the first class that the uh, that canonically your character takes, as we will get to at some point later. Um, and so I was originally going to go with that, but then I came up with other reasons not to. Uh, you have the Pugilist. Uh, normally you would think that it's like, oh, it's like a monk, so they're unarmed. Actually, no. They use these uh, punching gauntlets, which uh, sometimes are a little bit weird, but uh, they're, they're really neat every once in a while. And of course, my favorite ones are the ones where it's just a pair of gloves, uh, because that's always great. And then you have Lancer, uh, if you know anything about that, that evolves into a Dragoon. If you know anything about uh, Final Fantasy as a series, you know that the Dragoons are usually the coolest characters on the block. <laughs> so, of course, you're going to want to show that off at some point. Uh, they just have some of the coolest armor. Uh, going to the magic classes, you have Conjurer, which becomes the White Mage, and Thaumaturge, which is the Black Mage. Um, just basic RPG stuff where it's like, uh, White Magic is about healing, Black Magic is about, uh, is about, like, elemental stuff. And so, it's all about, like, 
bouncing the two. Uh, they both have two-handed staffs and one-handed uh, scepters, which they could also have shields for, but eventually that kind of got, like, uh, phased out, as it were, and now they both basically use uh, staff, uh, unless you're a conjurer, in which uh, you have to go with the word cane, <laughs> wand or cane, because it has to be a different word so you know which one's doing which. And then you have the Arcanist, which is the only class... Originally there was going to be more, but it's the only class that has a, uh, a fork in it. You could either become a Summoner, like they're showing off here, uh, or you could use your uh, fancy book, sk um, book reading skills to become a Scholar, and... As you could probably tell, uh, Arcanist going to Summoner is the predicted trajectory for this class, but picking Arcanist also all, also gives you a healer because it's using the same EXP pool, so you could kind of... so you basically get two classes in one. Uh, really cool. I, I main this one. Uh, out of, like, all of the basic classes, this is one of the only ones that I still main. Most of the, um, other classes are all ones from other, from other expansions that we're gonna get to. Because this isn't all the classes. Uh, there's actually around, like, 30 now. 20... Yeah, there's 20 classes now. Uh, not including gathering and crafting. And we're going to get into all of that soon, but at the end of the day, what do I want to do? I want to show off two things. One, I want to show off as much lore and the world as possible. And two, I want to show off all the classes. I'm going to be doing all the stuff for all these classes eventually. So what do I want to do straight up? And that is going to be starting with the Gladiator. It starts in Old Dob, which is one of the center most cities. Uh, in the game. It has a really good starting location. It has probably the best starting zone, and a lot of the plot just looped back around to being about Ulda, so starting here and getting to know these characters early is probably the best thing for us. Mm -mm. Uh, we're gonna have to, uh, select a world here. Give me a second. Okay, there we go. Now we can uh, start. Uh, I'll see you after the cutscene. Hopefully the audio does not freak out.
Hey. Hey, you. You're finally awake. We were trying to cross the border. <laughs> uh, we've been playing a little bit of Skyrim. Uh, you all right, lass? You were moaning something fierce from for a while there. I actually, like, nope, can't increase that box size yet. Feeling the effects of the ether, I reckon. You'll get used to it, though. Don't worry. You there, halt. What's all this about? Inspection, men. Set, search the carriage. Why? Yeah, this this text box being so small, I can't even see like the text. I'm just an honest prattler friend, so uh, don't be too disappointed if you find nothing, eh? Mind your tongue, old man, whilst I cut it out. Sir, look. Somnus. Honest peddler, was it? Since when do honest peddlers deal in prohibited herbs? You're in a lot of trouble, old man. You'll run a dungeon till the end of your days unless you could afford the fine. Ah, uh, business as usual. Eh. The Amaldra, two arms. Oh, hey, there they are. Seven hell. Consider this a warning. Now go, all of you. Real talk, one of the reasons why I like uh, the old DOS starting stories because of that guy just flying backwards like that is just really funny. Whew. That kind of excitement ain't good for the heart. You be careful around them brass blades, lass. Bastards will have the shirt off your back if they fancy it. Like common bandits they are. Only less honest. Thank the gods for sending some beastmen to the rescue, eh? Hey, seeing as we still got a long ride ahead, you mind keeping me company till we arrive? Them youngins don't really care much for conversation, see? Brent's the name, and Penland's me trade. And judging by your unusual garments, I'd wager you're one of them new adventurers. I knew it. Going where the wind blows, seeking fortune and glory. Now that's why I call living. So long as you could avoid dying, I mean. There ain't no secret that adventuring's a risky business these days, especially. And what's the first thing that attracted you to it? Uh... Power, glory, money... Uh, technically something else? Well, if you were inclined the towel, it ain't... I about ain't about the pride. Might be old Brent's a chatterbox, but he sure as hell ain't no busybody. We all have a secret or three, don't we? Me? Dozens. I'd rather stayed secret too, which is why I don't go sticking me nose where it ain't welcome. Just remember though, there are more important things than fortune and glory, such as breathing, and no profit in being dead, that's a fact. By the by, is this your first time to old Ah? Uh, technically? It is? Well then, let this journeyed iterant, iterant tell you the ins and outs of your destination. Old Oz ruled by the Sultana in name, but most folks know the Syndicate holds all the real power. Them and their monetarist cronies would happily get rid of her grace altogether, but that won't happen while she still commands the loyalty of the Loyalists, and the royal Royalists are ain't nothing but loyal. 
These factions have long fought over power, throwing the weight of their wealth against each other as they show no signs of stopping. Of course, the Lizardmen, that's the Amalja, couldn't care less about old Isle politics. They have their own interests, see, and the Anafrid use force to serve them. I was trying to finish it off before the joke about leaves the screen. They say war is a gift to peddlers, need breeding profit, and Though it shames me to say it, I'm inclined to agree. Ah, at long last. Behold Old Da, Jewel of Thanalit, where folk turn sand into gold. Deep in the sun-baked south, surrounded by the shifting sands of an endless desert, she rises. A solitary rose amidst the dust and rock, a symbol of defiance, her name, Ulda. Even with the coming of the seventh umbral era, hope springs eternal for the mongers and merchants who vie for lost fortunes in this bustling oasis. As the twin faces of Nold Thal maintain their vigil over all that has been and shall be, the present proffers a brave soul. One whose arrival could mark the beginning of a new era of prosperity for the realm. And here's where we part ways, lass. Oh. I'm off to the markets that all over me wares, and it's on to the high road for me. Here, I want you to have this. By way of thanks for putting up with me prattle. You never did tell me your name, though. Hey, but here's an idea. Become the sort of storied personage I could brag about having met. And I'll consider a square. May the traders nurture our fortunes as they kindle the flames which burn within us all. For by fire are we reborn. So, I have this whole backstory for my character. Uh, I'm gonna probably explain it to you, uh, in the video at some point, but uh, let's just say I have a headcanon reason for why my character is here in the first place. Uh, one of the one of the things I kind of want to bring up while we have the chance, while we haven't fully uh, loaded into the game, because even though we are about to start playing, we still haven't finished our setup, quote unquote. And we will, and I'm gonna need to set up uh, a ton of stuff before we actually start. But, uh, the one thing I do find funny is that uh, because that merchant has to be in all three of the starting areas, uh, they have to they have to figure out a way for him to actually be in all three of those locations so they basically came up with the joke that it's actually it's actually triplets and it's these three brothers who just never see each other on the road uh eventually you see all three of them sitting at a table having a good drink with each other and they're like hey we met you and now you're and now you're a cool person who's definitely at level 30 or higher <laughs> And it's really great because it's this is this cool moment where you actually see all three of the same character model, but they're in just different outfits. Or you venture over here. I, I mean you. Brush off the carrot by any chance? How can I tell? Heh. <laughs> Name's Wyman. And my business is knowing ever bugger else's. Now then, what if I were to offer you some invaluable advice by way of welcome to our fair city? 
free of charge even. Just this once, like. Welcome to Uldah, the shiny beacon of prosperity rising from the deserts of Thanalan. Please select a control scheme you'd like to use. Uh, we are using mouse and keyboard. Uh, controller's fine, I, it just does, never sat well playing this game with a controller. Follow the instructions to move your character and adjust the proportions of the camera. When you're ready to proceed, speak to y -Man. So, three things. One, uh, everything here. Two, uh, this text box, every once in a while, will just have people just yelling in general chat about, like, whatever thing they want. But they also have, like, uh, all the text we just saw in the cuts in here. So I can't just, like, fully remove this from my, uh, from my UI in case I need it. Uh. Oh, I was just reading a message I just got. But, uh, we actually have a, uh, solution for our little problem down here, in case anyone yells anything. Boop! There we go. Uh, my little uh, character sitting down there in the corner perfectly uh, masks the box, so unless we really need to bring something up that is uh, going on in there, uh, then I will explain it. Uh, but that means that I have to move some things around uh, that normally, on my version of the game, uh, I would be able to, like, put things in certain places, and not have to worry about this text box. But we will, uh, we will get to that. But first, we've got to manage this UI, so I'm going to be right back. Okay, before you say anything, uh, even worse when I, uh, do this, uh, I'm going to just put that right there. There we go. Uh, so this may look like a mess. And to a lot of people, it is, but this helps me concentrate because um, I'm a person who is slowly transitioning from, you know, clicking on everything on the screen to actually using bars because I've slowly been transitioning to uh, using, like, uh, to putting, like, of just, like, hitting buttons and then pressing shift to do buttons. Right now I've currently got uh, on my hotbar, if I can actually move to it, uh, I have E right there, so I have like easy access ones right at my finger, like all that kind of stuff. All the stuff that I've currently placed is all for later, um, because even though we do have access to the uh, Is that over there? Huh. Um, even though I have access to things like the achievement tab and uh, my armory chest, uh, a lot of that is not as important. Oh, well, sorry, a lot of it is barely understandable of what's going on. What I don't kind of need to explain just yet is uh, some of the stuff that I have uh, auto keyed. <laughs> so I've got a uh, so I have a sprint right there. I've got uh, a few of the important tabs that I need mapped to where they're going to go because I don't have them yet because I don't have a uh, crafting and gathering class yet. Uh, right here is limit break, which is cool stuff that you could do while in, uh, well, actually like in like party stuff, because I have sprint, uh, emotes, which is surprisingly, uh, needed even in single player. When you're doing single player content, you will oftentimes find a need to have emotes on tab. Then we have our journal page, which has not been fully given to us yet. I also, um, have key items, not just regular inventory, pulled up just in case I need it. Leave it over just like that. Ah. I might actually need to move it like right there. I think. Um that's a that's an okay spot for now. Mm. 
yeah. Armory chest right there, then we put our inventory right there for later. Got it. Okay, now we can talk to Wyman. Okay, to be recognized as an adventurer in the city-state of Old Eye, you must register yourself with the Adventurer's Guild. It is plain with, to anyone with eyes, you don't know your way around here. If I let you go wandering down the nearest dark alley, you're certain to get mugged or worse, and I don't want that on my conscience. So, before you go doing anything else, you'll want to head over to the Quicksand and speak with Momo D. She's the master of the Adventurer's Guild and can set you on the right path. Just take those steps over yonder and pass through the double doors, you'll find her inside. And that's as much as you're getting for free. Good luck with the adventuring, adventurer. Cool. We're still in a, um, to begin a quest, I understand that. Uh, oh my gosh, I forgot to actually finish mapping movement. Uh, uh, not turn left and right. I want to strafe left and right. There we go. There we go. Uh, I forget what the actual character configuration thing it is with movement. Where instead... There we go. The legacy type. So, whenever I walk backwards instead of, like, keeping, maintaining eye focus forward, I just move backwards. That's going to be very useful for several things. And I'm one of those people that like moving the camera with my mouse while moving like this. It is going to be a a detriment later. I know that, which is why I've been slowly transitioning away from a clicking on things, let's just say. Uh, I made the text color pop out a little bit more from the scenery, but that's just me, because I'm kind of weird like that. Okay. Why, hello there! Who might you be? If you're looking to join the Adventurous Guild, you come to the right place. Name's Momodi, and I own this fine establishment if it please you. I also manage the Adventurous Guild here in Ulda, so you might say that looking after green adventurers like yourself is my vocation. And lucky for you that it is without someone like me to steal your right. You'd soon find yourself out in the middle of nowhere, caught up in business you don't understand. Like our conflict with the Amalja, for example, they've been plaguing the Sultanate for nigh on, oh, forever now. And then there are the Garlean Empire. None can say for sure what they're planning these days, only that they are. Uh, the people here drink and make merry, but underneath it all, there's worry. Worry and a lingering fear, feeling of loss. A little wonder, it's scarce been five years since the lesser moon cracked open like a giant egg, releasing an abomination intent on turning the realm into an eighth hell. So much was lost in the blink of an eye. It was like the end of the world had come at last. But, th but then things began to be foggy. Everyone got their own version of what happened next. Some of them two or three. I think people would remember something like that, but the fact is, they don't. No one does. There's one thing the survivors agree on, though. The part played by a band of adventurers who laid down their lives for a realm that wasn't their own. And they fought valiantly. Like so many others, they returned Oh, they never return. Deeds worth remembering, I'm sure you'll agree. It's a shame our recollections of those brave heroes are just as jumbled as those of the Calamity itself. 
whenever we try to call, we call their faces to mind, it's like they're standing between us and the midday sun, permanently silhouetted. I'll bet that sounds poetic to you, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's bloody infuriating. But even if we can't remember them, we'll not let them be forgotten. And so we call them the Warriors of Light. And they'll forever stand a shining example to what adventurers can achieve. And that's why I welcome new arrivals like yourself to our fair city. All I ask for you is to lend a helping hand and try to leave Ulda a better state than you found her. If you can promise that, I'll be happy to let you join the guild. Alright then, a promise is a promise now. I'm counting on you for help. Uh, to put the past behind us. We need people working and spending and bickering like the old days. And a happy and prosperous old Dom means more business for the quicksand, too. Any road, let's make this official. Go ahead and write your name in the register, neat as you can. Blue Cashmere. Well, ain't that a charming name. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Alright, Miss Cashmere, on behalf of the Adventurers Guild, I officially... No, oh, please, sir, merciful. Twelve my witness, I swear to you, I'll bring you your money. In the East, it is said that even a merciful god might be driven to vengeance if thrice blasphemed. Be grateful that you are given a fourth chance to offend. You two attend to this scum. No, please, mercy. Well, ain't that a sorry sight. No one uncommon one, if I'm honest. Don't worry, though. If you work hard, I doubt you'll end up being like him. Just the same, if you ever need a bit of advice about one thing or another, pay me a visit. Just don't go bothering me every time you stub your bloody toe, alright? Of course, I do enjoy hearing a leading views on... The many manhoods of our acquaintance from time to time. Any road? Welcome to Old Ablu. Take a moment to catch your breath, and I'll teach you a little bit about our fair city. Hey, there we go. This concludes the introductory game tutorial. We... You have taken your first step as an adventurer in the city of Ulda. Listen well to the wisdom of Mamodi Modi. <laughs> it it's so hard to under So the way that the naming for the um I just in case anyone doesn't know, um I'm gonna just refer to them every once in a while by what they are conventionally known as. Uh the halfling sort of race of the Lollafell. The way that their name are structured is that is that they have a double-barreled name and then another letter. That uh, first part of their name is like a family name. And if it replicates like that, it's the head of the household, I think. I think that's how that works. So it's Momo D. Modi. I don't think it's pronounced Momodi Modi. Uh, I believe it's pronounced Momodi. It's like um, each each name is like a, a three part is like um, a three syllable sound. Yeah. Man, I leveled up from doing nothing. That's cool. Um, main scenario quests. Uh, if something has this fiery aura around it, it is the main scenario quest. If it's a blue symbol with a plus onto it, you will unlock stuff. Uh, that will be important for you to do as well. If it's just the yellow, we will be doing a few of those. But only the ones that actually get us something interesting at the end. Momo D, the proprietor of the quicksand, wants you to perform the three tasks that will help you learn the fundamentals of adventuring. 
before you go charging off to find your fortune, I have a few basic tasks I'd like you to perform so as to help you get to know the place. First of all, I want you to visit the Etherite Plaza. To get there, head west from here till you reach Emerald Avenue. Then look to the north. You should see a giant floating crystal called an Etherite. If it weren't for the Etherites, traveling around Eorzea would be a damn sight more troublesome than it is. Of course, you still need to attune with them before you can use them. So be sure that you do that. The one in the plaza. Have you ever attuned with an Etherite before blue? Oh, have you ever? Oh, it's strictly a question, but it doesn't have the beginning part. If not, just lay your hand on the thing, and you'll see what I mean. When you're done with that, I want you to pay a visit to the Gladiator's Guild over by the Coliseum. Assuming that sword isn't, isn't just for show, you might consider training there. And finally, I want you to visit the Sapphire Avenue Exchange over on the steps of Thal. Goods from all across Eorzea and beyond turn up over there every day, and you'll have no trouble finding armor, weapons, or anything else a fledgling adventurer like yourself might need. You might even say that everything's for sale here in Old Dawn, as long as you've got the guild. Just make sure you don't pay more than you ought to, Baloo. There's plenty... There's plenty as won't scruple to swindle unsuspecting foreigners like yourself, especially if they think no one's looking out for their best interests. Which is why I'm giving you this letter. When you visit the exchange, find a gentleman named Cesaroga and give it to him. He'll be happy to tell you about the markets once you, he's read it. In short then, it's the Etherite Plaza, Gladiator's Guild, Sapphire Exchange. Simple. Oh, but before you go, word of advice, uh, while there's more than a few unsavory characters out there who will try to take advantage of you, there are also some with honest-to-goodness problems you could consider offering a helping hand to. A lot of folk are lured to this city with the promise of wealth and power. What many of them fail to re realize is that instead of chasing after Gil the moment that they get here, you have to be making friends. Let it be known that you're willing to give as much as you get and opportunities will come your way. Speaking of which, you should speak to the smith over there. Those lads always have some good advice for up-and-coming adventurers. Otherwise, that's about it from me. It's past time you got going. Oh, and let me know when you finished, will you? That way I won't spend my days worrying that you've... that you're down to your small clothes without a guilt to your name. I... I guess... Okay, now things are loading because now we're actually going into the real game for once. Okay, so I've done two things. One, uh... I've actually reduced the amount I can see, like, um, not in terms of like how many characters are on the screen, by, um, but by removing a bunch of names off of characters. If I do that, it actually feels like this player character over here, because you can see that it's like, it wants me to, uh, to check them. Their names no longer appear, and I did that for mostly an aesthetic reason. So, like, when we're walking around town and we see a bunch of people just standing around, you don't see a bunch of names and a bunch of titles and stuff. You see people out in the world and it feels a little bit more... you know... lived in. Greetings, I'm one of the Smiths, a stoker of fires and forger of futures. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, dude, uh, I'm not gonna read any of your dialogue. The new adventure status is applied to all players who have recently begun their adventures in Eorzea, which is this little sprout icon. Amongst Eorzea's thriving population, there are these seasoned adventurers known as mentors, which have a little crown symbol. When a new adventurer and a mentor form a party, they both receive a bonus to experience 
to experience bonus is experience points earned as a bonus. Pawn invitation by mentor new adventures can also gain access to the novice network, which is the reason why my character is over there. Um, so we are going to be talking to this guy a little bit later because he has a more in-depth combat tutorial for us to get but for right now we don't really need it but we do need two things one i need to actually pull up the screen to explain uh so every single one of these stats are important for our character this roll stat over here is only important to certain characters Physical properties are important to physical-based characters. Mental properties are important to magical-based characters. Uh, but basically, every stat that's on here is important in some way, shape, or form. Uh, the only thing that we really need to keep track of as of right now is our level. And as you can see from all of these classes, Eventually, we will have these done. It's going to take a while. Uh, definitely. It's one of the reasons why this series never originally came out in the first place. But, we got to do two. We've got to do this quest that we were given. And first things first, we should probably go to the Sapphire Exchange. So, let's go here. Uh, hey, why is it a different type of day? Um, so I had to fix a few more of my settings because I realized that certain things were still on. It is now fixed. Um, so this is the Sapphire Exchange. It is honestly one of the more popular, um, the second most populated marketplace uh, in the game. Like I'm. I always see like this many people just like standing around. You are? Oh, a newly come adventurer, but of course. Yes, I am Cesaroga. What can I do for you? Ah, uh, you would have me teach you the ways of the marketplace. Very wise. As for my fee, now you're expecting me to do it for free? Surely you jest. My dear adventurer, when you ask an old Don for a favor, you must at least make it worth his while, judging by your garb. I rather doubt that you could afford my services, but the fact that you offer nothing is laughable. Uh, handing over items. Uh, there's two ways of doing it. You just drag and drop it, or you could just right click, which is oftentimes the easier way to do it. Oh. Miss Momodi instructed you to seek me out, did she? Huh, consider yourself fortunate to have such influential friends. I shall be brief, and you shall be attentive. You stand in the Sapphire Avenue Exchange, the busiest and most profitable marketplace in the Sultanate. Being advantageously situated in relation to the other city-states, Oldaz markets have, have ever served as both the literal and figurative centers of Eorzean commerce. All the great overland trade routes lead to our city, and the majority of maritime trade between Vilbrand and Aldenard passes through our ports. Because of this, countless companies and consortia have chosen Ulda as their base of operations. They see to it that this marketplace is awash with merchants and moneylenders day and night. Anything a man could ever desire can be purchased here, provided he has these sufficient funds. Surely there's something you seek, adventurer. A deadlier sword, perhaps, or a shinier trinket, whatever it is. The exchange will have it. To the north, you'll find merchants peddling armor and accessories and curatives and crafting materials. And to the south, you'll find weapons, tools, and assortment of other useful items for sale. Seek out a particular merchant or browse to your heart's content, but do try to remain aloof should you find yourself something that piques your interest. 
Decisions made in the heat of the moment are usually unwise, especially where coin is concerned. Ahem. That is all the complimentary aid you shall have from me, and far too much for my taste. My regards to Mamardi, now off with you. Hey, there we go. Um, rather simple. Uh, I never, like, each city has, like, their own way of, uh, of, like, separating out, uh, certain areas. Uh, all you really need to know is what names mean. So if you go up to someone that is called an independent merchant, and they have this uh, colored tapestry above them, usually they will have dyes for you to for you to color your clothes, or the arms mender will actually sell much, but you can repair your stuff here. You know, stuff like that. And all of that's really simple. Uh, but while we're over here, we're gonna grab this. So, the Ethernet, which is an incredible name, uh, is a method of fast travel between uh, places inside of the city, and it is going to be imperative that we actually do that. Uh, because believe it or not, uh, sometimes uh, the cities are not laid out in the most uh, fluent direction and people want to get from one place to the other without having to go up two flights of stairs and then down another one. Um, there's another one outside the uh, Adventurer's Guild right here. I'm probably going to just run and grab the rest of them. Uh, off camera, so we can just uh, skip ahead with that. But as you can see from the map, which I'm actually going to increase the size like that, just for my own, um, just for my own well-being. Uh, man, all that text. Uh, let's hide that for a bit. Uh, probably gonna reduce the uh, the text size. Yeah, I'm probably gonna do that in a bit. Um, because I just can't tell what's going on here. Uh, there's different places that we can go, different etherites, and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's like being here. And teleporting over here is a lot easier than just cresting around this corner and doing all that. Yeah, here's the um, yellow quest I was talking about. Uh, we're actually going to talk to Wyman in a bit. Because we have to do at least one side quest. And we're going to be on level for our experience. <laughs> like, I am not even kidding. We only need to do just one. Out leaving the city. You were tuned to the Etherite. Hail, adventurer. Might you have come at the behest of Miss Momodi? Momodi? It's. It's so hard. Of the quicksand? Excellent. What. Which brings us to the matter of the attunement fee. What will... Well, that will be 100,000 gil, if you please, ma'am. Huh, apologies, but I do so relish the opportunity to make that jest. The look on your face was absolutely priceless. Ah, but the fact that you were so easily deceived suggests to me that you are unfamiliar with the use of etherites. Allow me to explain. These crystalline agglomeration, agglomerations tap into the ethereal energies that are primarily used as a means to travel swiftly from one place to another. Perchance that you have heard of Return and Teleport? Well, these transportation spells make direct use of the etherites and their connection to the flow of ether. 
Given that, there is an etherite in almost every corner of Eorzea. Any adventurer with a mind to explore the realm will wish to seek out and attune herself to each and every one. Even if you have no intention of wandering beyond the Sultanate's borders, it would be prudent of you to attune yourself to any etherites you encounter from now on. I pray you found that informative. Should you wish to learn more about the etherites or transportation magic, I should be happy to answer your questions. Yeah! can now use the spell return. Uh, unlike actual spells that use uh, MP, return as a uh, as an ability uh gonna just put right do I have to put that at the bottom? nah I'm gonna put the other one on the bottom um eh save uh return is gonna be our way that we return to the place that we have uh, properly attuned to. We're also going to register this as a favored destination. Uh, that way, our uh, whenever we teleport back here, it will have a reduced cost. Uh, there's going to be a few other places that we're going to list as uh, favored locations, but for right now, that's the only one we really have. Wow, that's really loud in my ear. Uh, and... Oh wait, no, this is the wrong one. Finally, we have... Uh, our... Um, our specific class guild. Uh, because each one in each starting city has a place for the people that are just starting out on their adventure to go and go like, hey, I want you to kill these five things. Can you kill these five things? And they're like, yeah, sure. Okay, cool. Uh, we now know that you're cool. We now know that you can do stuff. Welcome to the Gladiators Guild, friend. Tell me, are you new to the thrills of mortal combat? Whether you are or not, you are new to us. If you would take your place in these hallowed halls, you must be willing and ready to undergo the most rigorous training. You must endure cuts and bruises beyond counting, and like it as not far worse. A daunting prospect, I concede, but there is no other way if you mean to take the blood sands one day. And why wouldn't you? The Coliseum is only the most celebrated place of public entertainment in all of Ulda. Where else could a poor man amass a fortune so vast as to one day allow him to claim a seat on the syndicate? Ah, uh, there's not an Uldan alive who isn't inspired by the rise of the self-made man. There is no true embody- oh, and there is no true embodiment of this than the gladiator who wins riches and fame with his sword. Throughout its long and storied history, this guild has nurtured countless of champions. Our training methods are second to none, and our members ever strive to develop new techniques. If you desire true glory to fight and triumph amidst the roar of 10,000 voices, then this is where you belong, adventurer. Think of it. Think of your legacy and, the so and your soul stirs. Join us. Lulutsu wishes to for you to reaffirm your desire to join the Gladiators Guild. What will it be? Will you rise above the masses and inscribe your name in legend? Or will you reign, resign yourself to mediocrity and die in obscurity? A decision you shan't regret. One moment. Make, a way, make way for blue cashmere. Fresh meat coming through. Now then... Before your enrollment can be considered complete, you must present yourself to First Sword Mila. Seek her out and obtain her approval. So, we're actually getting food 
uh, after this, which reminds me, I should have probably gotten some of this. Uh, so, we're getting finished talking here, but we actually needed to make a stop at the, uh, at the, uh, at the Avenue Exchange again so I can grab one thing. I heard Lulitsu, so you're Blue Cashmere. Tis a good strong name. On behalf of the Gladiators Guild, allow me to welcome you. I am Mila, Grit, Guildmaster here. So you wish to study our arts. I presume you have your reasons for choosing the sword over their, all of their weapons. A sword is a simple weapon, but to wield a blade is well... To wield a blade well is anything but simple. For every Colosseum champion to emerge from her ranks, there have been countless disappointments who failed to achieve greatness. Bear that in mind before you answer me, Blue, for I do not ask this question lightly. Do you have the strength to live by the sword, and if it be your fate, die by it? Yes. Then welcome, Gladiator, to your new home. Let's not waste time, shall we? I would gauge your aptitude for the sword. Just outside the gates of Old Die, you'll find plenty of marmots, hornets, and shrews. Slate three of each of them in the return here when finished. A simple task, but essential to your training nonetheless. Now go. Okay. So, uh, one of the things I neglected to mention, and we're going to slowly make our way back over... Uh, actually, this is a good time to just, uh, attune all these places. Uh, one of the, uh, one of the things that we need to do relatively fre um, frequently is update our gear. Right now we've got the starting stuff, which is, for lack of a better term, um, the only thing worse than it is stuff that is only designed for cosmetic changes, and that's relatively it. On the bright side, though, we have a we have the distinct pleasure of hindsight to know when and where to grab certain things, and um, and we also know that since dungeons are coming up. Dungeons will actually be one of the best ways to get armor. Uh, because each dungeon will basically have a new set of armor for each class going through it. And then later on, uh, they will they will move away from it being... Uh, what's, what's the best way to, to phrase it? Uh, it will move away from all physical, um, all, all physically attacking characters use this armor set, all, uh, all magically inclined characters use this armor set. Instead of it being like that, uh, it's gonna shift to very specific. Like, this name relies to these three classes. This name, rel um, is referring to exclusively Rogue. And so, we're gonna have a little bit more of... We're gonna have a little bit more of a uh, leeway when it comes to that kind of stuff. So, uh, we're actually gonna get a little bit more of those marmot steaks that, uh, that she was gonna give us. We're actually gonna grab about, like... Yeah. Now, you might be asking, why am I buying so much of this? Uh, two things. One, uh, skill speed is going to be useful for a melee character. Uh, we could have grabbed flatbread, which gives us tenacity, but anything that's basically giving us a flat rate is not going to be as good as a percentage rate. So we have food. We now have food there. It will go right there. And... And, to be honest, um, I've always rather enjoyed the idea that in MMOs, you basically go, 
How do you get more experience? You, uh... You have no idea what that is. Uh... Huh, there's like a rumbling going on. Uh... I... I don't know if that's gonna get picked up on the, uh... On the microphone, but that's really funny that I'm hearing that. Uh, so... So yeah, if we just eat food, it will, um, it will give us extra experience, which is the important part, but it will also give us benefit, um, extra skill benefits. And we could eat up to two pieces of food for a one hour bonus, which should be enough for us to get through all of this. Uh, and we should have actually been... Like, the second we loaded in, like, the second we got any form of money, we actually probably should have just ran around, uh, just getting as much experience as possible with this food buff on. Uh, but for right now, uh, this is good enough. And let's turn in this main quest, and then... Do the uh, rest of the gladiator stuff. How was your tour of the city, Blue? Get lost, did you? I well, Old Dell's a big place with lots to see and do, but wandering around aimlessly don't pay the bills. If you're serious about making a living here, you'll need to remember where things are. So, when you go exploring, explore like you've got a purpose, eh? Alright then. All that's left for you to work hard, make money, and spend it here at the quicksand. There we go. Now at level 3. To get this next one, we have to get to level 4, which we will do... Um by getting the experience from this. Uh, let's quickly grab the, the rest of the etherite first, though. I think that's the last one? Yeah, I can't move. You have attuned yourself to all of the ethernet shards. Uh, we now have access to certain areas that before we just couldn't teleport to. So, not only are we up here and we can teleport to all the places, we can now also teleport to the exits as well. Um, I believe we're going to want to teleport here. Yeah, because if we go to the other place, then we won't get as much... Uh, uh, we won't have all three of the items. All, all three of the uh, enemies. So here we are, in the actual open area. As you can see by the uh, mini-map, we've got a uh, a few enemies to defeat. Uh, combat's really easy. So, the way the attacks work uh, is that when you encounter an enemy, and you go up to it, and you hit them for the first time, you can you now start auto attacking them for minimal damage, but it's still a little bit of damage between hits. Um, and then you could use your abilities to do it between that. Uh, right now we have an ability that can buff our attacks, so it improves the actual damage that we do on top of that. And every single time that we defeat an enemy, we get a little bit more experience to do the food bomb. Uh, everything kind of understandable. It's uh, very simple like that. But one of the um, one of the important things to kind of note is that as of right now we can basically do whatever we want when it comes to when it comes to our level and progression but we just can't switch classes uh that's the one thing we can't do right now 
uh, the reason for that is because they want you to kind of keep with your character up until level 10, and then you can do stuff. Um, I've actually noted, I noted on the original um, version of this that I recorded, that one of the um, more simple things uh, for us to do right now is to progress the story to a very distinct point and then before progressing then we're gonna go and do something else um oh forgot to kill one last shrew um one of the um one of the things that i did kind of uh learn through trial and error of having to do this character five times at this point is that uh is that I don't need to worry so much on making sure that I am up to date and I don't need to worry about I don't really need to worry about um uh, uh, what is it I, I don't need to worry so much about making sure they have the content down because as of right now this is all I need to worry about. I'm going to eventually do all of this. But this is all I need to worry about right now. Um, as for right now, we have a gladiator that has okay, okay jewelry right now. And technically this is more of a, uh, a, uh, a fashion item that we, that we have uh, some sentiment towards. But all of this, like, wither weathered stuff and the stuff that is specific for a uh, a starting character all of this doesn't matter uh, we're gonna be uh, shoving this somewhere specific so we're not gonna be selling it but we want to by the time we hit level 10 to have basically upgraded all of our stuff and the best Thing we could do right now which i completely forgot until i just mentioned right now is that we have a very fortunate way to get some extra experience we have two ways and we could use both of them and i think i'm gonna use both of them because originally i wasn't going to originally i was gonna sit there uh, cross my arms and basically go no this is the easy track I want to actually like slowly absorb all of this stuff and I feel like that that's not going to be useful later on greetings tall one I'm the delivery moogle one second while I there we go now I can read that properly from this distance oh I know what you're thinking Moogles are supposed to hide in trees and avoid contact with outsiders. Why would they ever agree to carry around letters? Why indeed. If I had my way, I would have curled up under the canopy of a nice oak, dream about some beautiful Mooglelette with a rainbow-colored pom-pom. But no, the moon had to go and drop from the sky, causing all terrible commotion. Etherites were shattered and link pearls were rendered useless. For moons, the, pri the poor wingless people of Eorzea had no way of communicating with each other beyond screaming at the top of their lungs, which no one really approved of. That is, until the little horned ones asked us to assist them by delivering messages. At first, we were wary of showing ourselves, worried that one of you might catch us and skin us, like you do every other forest furry. But once we saw how much we were appreciated, we knew we had found our new calling, and I personally promised to try and not read anything along the way. Look what you have here. Five new letters just arrived for you. So, uh, you can get stuff through the delivery service. Uh, all of these are just going to be letters that are from because I have played for so long. But the only one we need to open is this one. Now you might be wondering... 
what exactly this is and why I'm just grabbing that for now and not everything else uh, because the rest of those are just like uh, stuff to wear. Uh, can just quickly absorb that so I don't have to worry about that for now. Um, but the thing I got is a thing that I'm still wearing on my characters, which is Menfina's earring. Uh, increases XP earned by 30% when the character is under level 80. Uh, the thing is, this is such a powerful earring that it's giving me bonuses like far and above what I'm supposed to have right now. Uh, so, yeah. When... When I eventually get far enough into this game that I don't need this, we're going to be at current content. So we don't... It's so interesting. I've, um... The other thing we need to do is, at level 15, we need to come back and talk to, uh... The Smith to get a few other things, because we need to get through that tutorial and he will also give us something that will increase our uh, XP gaining abilities. But for right now, just eating food is good enough. See, that's so much more simple than just walking around, and it's fair. Uh, walking around is fine, but when you're trying to do things fast inside of a city, uh, Fast travel is literally the only way to go. Okay. Let's finish this up. Welcome back, Blue. I take it you've dispatched the beast with ease. Rest assured, there will be a far greater challenge to come. If you wish to master the sword, you must test yourself against a wide variety of foes. To this end, I present to you this hunting log. It contains information on creatures ideal for a gladiator in training. You will doubtless gain valuable experience should you seek out and slay them. It is only with such practice that you will recognize and eliminate the deficiencies in your technique. Your training under me shall continue once the haft sits so snugly in your hand you cannot imagine holding aught else. Until then, Blue, your next quest will be at level 5. Hunting log has been obtained. Uh, the hunting log is unironically uh, the best thing in um, in 2.0. So they basically tell you to go out and defeat certain enemies in certain areas. And one, it forces you to explore all those areas. Two, it incentivizes you for actually going out and just defeating enemies. So. Uh, they're gonna have like a little icon above their head of like, hey, target this guy. And we're gonna be doing all of this because this is free XP and it's very useful. Like, just completing... Like, what, like, what did it say? Like, just completing this one page of the log nets us 2,500 experience. That is... Uh two and a half times what it takes for me to get from level four to level five. Like, that is really useful. So after we talk to... After we talk to, uh, Melody, we should actually go on and do that. mid -yon. So, we now just got our second ability. Which is going to be very useful for us because basically it's our one two combo right now and it is very efficient for us. Momodia the quicksand wants to introduce you for a certain someone in the old uh, dispatch yard. Oh, we're gonna get new armor. Cool. Well youngling, how are you finding fair old da then? Got your barons about you set yet? If so, mayhap it is time you adventured beyond the city walls. Because before you had to do like a bunch of other quests, 
Uh, then they've raised all the experience that the main story gives you. They removed a lot of fluff from the actual level, from the actual like uh, progression part of it, and relegated it to uh, side objectives. So they don't force you to do a bunch of stuff to get from point A to point B. Uh, like every single time, uh, I think about like an expansion of the game, and they basically go. We've reduced the amount of fluff that it takes for you to get through to the story. Uh, I find that really, really cool. Yeah, so when it happens time you venture beyond the walls. The bustling streets of Uldar are one thing, but the walls of Thanalin is another altogether. I know a bloke you might, that might fancy speaking to, and he you. Name of Papa Sean. You'll find him over at the... Old Dog uh, Dispatch Yard. No doubt he'll have some work for you. Dispatch Yard's over in Central Thanalin. Just head out the door across the hall and you'll see the Gate of Nald staring back at you. Pass through and head east. You'll walk. Uh, you'll come upon it for long. There's dangers beyond the walls, though. More than I care to count. Nothing too terrible, mind you. But feisty enough to attack you if you draw near. Don't say no one cared enough to warn you. Okay. Um, before we actually go out, I did want to actually go through the other set of doors. To the other direction to kind of show off that area. Western. There we go. Um, there's, um... Yep, there you go. Uh, one of the reasons why I came out over here is uh, so we can do this. So this is the little icon that shows us that we can do it for the hunting log. And so we can basically keep bashing our head against ladybugs all day until we actually get that extra experience, move on to star marmots, and basically do the entire log. Um, even though the highest thing on this is like level 10, we could technically still do it. It will just take a little bit longer. And the benefit of doing page 1 of just this is that we're going to be at such a level that we don't really need to worry about like running into red text saying you're too low of a level for this right now. So we can do this really quickly. 